Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel Animate Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today on the table something a little bit older from Metal Earth, the Crawler Crane. Before there were cat models there was the Crawler Crane. I don't think this one is too complicated but you know I could speculate all I'd like. Let's open this up, see what's inside, put it together and see how difficult it is. The Crawler Crane. Little tap to knock the instructions out of the way while I tear open the top. What do we have? The usual two sheets of metal parts. And let's see, is this one or two? Ah, two sheets of instructions. Starting with the first one. We know it's the first because the first one always has the metal earth. logo or name on it. We open up to the front to page one. We have the usual Metal Earth 3D laser cut model, a line drawing of the completed model, and one of the sheets. A little bit here about insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines, and one of the pieces to kind of demonstrate, or one of the, yeah, one of the pieces of the model. A little note about needle nose pliers being helpful for assembly, and they are. And the legend we see a blue circle in the assembly instructions but beside a connection point it means to insert the tab and bend it over 90 degrees a green triangle means to insert the tab and twist the tab 90 degrees and down here a little note if you pull and screw or pull and twist the tab as you're connecting the twisted tabs it makes for a more secure connection down here we have the metal sheets and I will grab one as an example and this is one of the sheets and the line drawing thereof. You've got all the numbers pointing to the parts. It tells you which part is which number so that you can find it on the sheet in the assembly of directions to put the parts together. I feel like that came out really stupid. So down here we have the two metal sheets and I've got one here as an example. You see the drawing, line drawing of this sheet and all the part numbers pointing to the parts so that you can find those parts as you're going through the assembly flowchart to put this model together. And then over here, on page two, we have the start of the assembly flowchart, starting with part one, part two, and another part two. So there's two part twos. This is telling you non-engraved side is, is this side. And this part attaches here, and this part attaches here, and there's a little bit of a fold to it. And you end up with this, and then come down here. You've got part three. Four and five come together in this little sub assembly and come down here and attach. Six, this is a little sub assembly or you know showing you how to shape that and that it connects here. And you just follow through following the arrows in whatever direction that they take you, completing the sub assemblies and assemblies, and adding the parts on when you get to the bottom. Flip over to page three, continue on, following the arrows and completing sub assemblies and adding parts on. And on the page four, much of the same, and you get to the end of that. We move on to the next page, or next sheet. Inside we have, flip it over, page five. Just complete that. Page six, continue on. Flip over to seven. This looks like this might go kind of quick. And then page eight, and once you get to the bottom, oh, it's this way now, you are finished with your metal model. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers, useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat, sort of curved end, great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models, and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. 
I don't use these very often, but they sometimes come in quite handy. They're angled needle nose pliers, and I typically use them for one of two reasons. Either getting into a strange shaped area to twist a tab because of the angle. More frequently though, I use them to fold over flaps along bases or side of parts that are too long for the flat nose pliers, but needle nose pliers can't get to them safely without bending or warping something else. These will grab a longer area and bend it over. And we've looked over directions. we got our metal sheets here, some tools to get us started. Let's put this together. Why stop and grab a tool when I can easily push a tab over with my fingernail? I tried a little different method to shape the second part too. It didn't go badly, but it wasn't the best way to go. I went ahead and shaped both part 5's and attached 4 now. Looking ahead, I knew I'd just have to do it again soon. I expected the two ends of the track to line up evenly when folded around, but they come up a little short, which makes bending the two tabs connecting the ends rather tricky.
In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality, I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. It took me some time to get all these tabs lined up in their slots.
It took some trial and error to find the right size drill bit to shape the circular parts. The different ends were different sizes. You can't really see over my big fingers here, but I am twisting two inside pieces in the lower end as indicated by the assembly flowchart. To bend these two tabs inward, I pinch them together with tweezers. Typically one tab folds in before the other, but it's a start and the one tab typically makes things secure enough to easily bend in the other tab. I bent the tab at a slight angle to help it line up with its slot.
It took me multiple tries to get the tabs on these two circular parts on the end lined up with their slots. These two little twisted tabs were a little bit in the way, so I sort of folded them inward a bit.
and I give you the crawler crane. Done. Pretty neat little model. I didn't really have much expectations with this. Honestly, didn't look that interesting until the cat models came out. And then it was like, hey, those are neat. And oh, look, that's neat too. Let me build that. So there you go. Finally built. A little surprised that the body rotates from the tracks. I, once again, didn't think that came out until some of the newer models. I guess maybe this one, maybe this is not as old as I think it is. But it's pretty neat, and it was an interesting build, a little bit challenging, fun to do. I enjoyed it. Very happy to have built it and have it complete, although getting the body put onto this platform, it was a bit of a tight squeeze. It's almost like it didn't want to fit. This build took an hour and 40 minutes, and again, it was a fun, slightly challenging build. The body was the most difficult part as far as getting it to kind of squeeze together into place. That was, you know, that was the most difficult part, but that's not to say that it was difficult. Really, this model came together pretty simply and pretty easily. A little bit tedious getting the end pieces and all the cables curved, but that could have gone so much worse than it did. Overall, it went pretty well, fairly easy, a nice little build. And you end up with this. A little bit of adjustments after you've got it together. This is not as tight looking as I would have expected it to be. And it took, you know, you kind of have to adjust some of the fine pieces more so in this model when you're done than some. That's always an issue, some fine adjustment. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you like these build videos, you want to support and help keep them coming, check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description down below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.